In this video, we're going to look at uh, timing a non-repetitive operation. In other words, when you don't know the sequence that the guy is going to do the work in. So you can see on the screen here over on the left, the sequence column already has data in it. One, two, three, four, five in this example. Now over here in the PDA, this has been passed down into the handheld device, what you see in the template here. And there's an elements option down here. And if I tap on the elements option with the stylus, you'll see the screen changes here. And here you can see basically the same format, the sequence, non-value delay, the hot list is not supported anymore in the category. So all these items are shown here. So you can see this is a miniature version of the Excel template, if you like. So get work order, walk to stories, get part, and so forth. Here are all the options underneath it. You see the indentation it's taking here. If I scroll down, you see the additional options coming up here. So the exact template that you have in Excel is available to you down inside the uh, inside the PDA. And what we want to do is, in this case, we're going to remove the sequence column. So all we have to do is tap uh, our stylus in any place in the sequence column area here. Uh, and here's the screen that we get when we tap on anywhere in the sequence column, which is the SQ in the background you can see here. And you've got an option here that says clear all. Just tap it here and all of the sequences have been removed. Now to return to our data collection, be sure and use the back button up here, the back option. Uh, if you use the back uh, key in the device, it's actually going to take you out. There'll be more about that later on. But when you want to make a change, use the back at the top right here, back into the data collection area. So now we don't have any sequence here. So now we hit the uh, start button. And notice there's no description here. It's completely blank, right? That's because it's waiting us to tell waiting for us to tell it what it's doing. So let's say we get a work order, and that's going to put it in here, and then we hit the time. It moves on. Anytime you see three periods here, it's looking for input from you. It's recording the time. It's waiting for you to tell it what it's doing. So let's say the guy's walking to storage, and then we hit the time. Now it's waiting for input. We say get part, so we tap get part, and then we tap medium. So I'm doing exactly the same as we would do uh, with a repetitive operation. But it's just taking me additional work because I have to tell it every time what he's doing. Now he's doing the pack, hit the time. I click on the update order sheet, hit the time. Right Now he's back, get work order again, hit the time. Walk to storage, so I have to select it. Now let's say I expect him to walk to storage. So I've made a decision, but then I changed my mind. So instead what he's doing, he's updating the IT record. So we can just change it. The clock is running here in the bottom right, you see right here. And we're just going to tap on the update IT record. It just changes the description at this point. So you can change the description anytime you want. Then hit the time when it finishes. Now he's going to get a part. Let's say it's a small part this time. Right? And then he's going to do some packing. So we select it. Then we hit the time. So it's always like select activity, hit the time. Select activity, hit the time. There's a little bit uh, more work than having a predefined sequence, but you really have no option when you don't know what the operator is going to be doing. At the end, we might update the order sheet, and we hit the stop. And of course, uh, when you start again, it's the same thing again. It's not going to know what's happening. So you can say, get the next order, hit the time, and then start filling, filling in the data by making the select in the item. Right. Once you've got it down here, when it ends, hit the time. So always hit the end of the, at the end of the activity, and then it's going to pack it off. Now let's say everything else works the same, so you wanted to repeat that element, hit the repeat, right? And you can keep on going here. And that and that'll keep on going. If you change it, he's updating the order sheet. That would repeat it. Let's say he's packed three items, now he updates the order sheet three times. So you can make use of this uh, quite easily here. Um to do that. When you finish, of course, you hit the repeat button to take it off again. And it'll say, What's he doing now? Okay, he's getting the next work order, and so on. And that's how you do a non-repetitive operation, just jumping around. And making your selections as the guy occurs. Again, if you make a mistake, like I said, get a part medium here, and it meant to be a small one, you can reselect that again, and it will change it to get part small down there. Okay, when you finish, of course, let's say packs, and then he updates the order sheet, and that's the end, hit the stop, and that's the end of your study.